Hey friends, today I am hanging out at Epcot and I'm continuing my food adventure around World Showcase. We've already dined at the Beer Garden, Le Cellier, San Angel Inn. We've done so many and now we are in the China Pavilion and their sit-down restaurant Nine Dragons is currently closed so we are going to be dining at the Lotus Blossom Cafe. I'm so excited. Let's go do this. There are actually so many different things that I can cover in the China Pavilion. They have their Reflections of China Circle Vision 360 show. They have a Shanghai Disney exhibit. And then of course, the House of Good Fortune's like merchandise location is such a huge store. So I'm excited to show you all the nifty things and just enjoy the China Pavilion. And like I said in the beginning, their sit-down location, the Nine Dragons, is currently closed, but the quick service is open, and it's actually run and operated by the same company. So it's going to be kind of the same food, and regardless, I'm excited because I love Chinese food. Before I jump in line at the Lotus Blossom Cafe, I want to show you around a little bit. Maybe take you into the Disney Shanghai exhibit. That's one of my favorite places that I think doesn't get enough attention that it should. I mean, it's kind of old because Shanghai Disney already opened, but this was set to actually show people what Shanghai Disney was going to be like. I've never been to the Shanghai Resort, but it's definitely on my wish list and hopefully before my time ends I actually make it there because that would make my life complete. Actually visiting all the Disney parks would make my life complete. So hopefully in the future. That's goals right there I say. As you can see right here, it's got its own entryway inside Shanghai Disney Resort. And it's just a really cool spot to look at some beautiful things and also get out of the sun because the AC in here is amazing. I think I'm the only person in here actually. I think I am, wow. I don't know where to start off. I guess Tomorrowland. Look at this, of course, most of us know Shanghai has the original Tron Light Cycle Power Run, which is coming to the Magic Kingdom this year. This is where the ride first actually appeared and it made such a huge splash that it's coming over here to Florida and they have so many other rides. They're designing the Jetpacks ride Look, they have a jetpack ride. I want a jetpack ride. They have some of the cast member costumings from over there because they have their own Toy Story Land. And this is from Al's Toy Barn. And just take a look at this. Isn't it so cool? They have an RC racer. It just goes up and like this all the way through and through. We have Disney Springs and Disneyland has Downtown Disney, but Shanghai Disney has Disney Town. This is like their shopping district. Right next door to Shanghai Disneyland is an inviting shopping, dining, and entertainment district. This is really fancy. They have a World of Disney there as well. I like the look of this. This looks really nice. It's awesome to be able to show you some of those nifty things that a lot of people don't get to see because usually when you're on like vacation mode, you're rushing, rushing around the parks. So you miss those little nook and crannies. But now I think we're gonna get in line because I wanna get something to eat. If you guys have ever been to Shanghai Disney, let me know in the comments because like I said, that is definitely on my wish list. Here is a look at the menu. Normally when I get Chinese food, I get like General Saul's chicken or I get orange chicken. So this time I think I'm gonna get the Mongolian beef combo. I've never Never had it before and the whole entire like reason for me trying all these new places is to try new food so I think I'm gonna go with that and then also I'm gonna get some pot stickers and maybe some of this caramel ginger ice cream that sounds pretty phenomenal unlike all the other quick service locations this one you actually still go up to like a cashier and they take your order for you it also looks like they have a daily special, an old Shanghai Shuzu 2, a pork and water chestnut meatball served with chicken fried rice, broccoli, and cabbage. I've actually had this before at the China uh, kiosk for uh, Festival of the Arts. How fancy is it that they're selling that in here now? Oh, and I think here comes my food. Thank you. Can I have chopsticks too? Perfect. Have a great one. Oh boy. Oh, that was that was not good. 
they do have an indoor seating area, so it's a little bit easier to actually be able to just enjoy your meal. A lot of quick service locations are limiting the amount of people that you can actually eat in like their dining room. Here they have every other row, so the table behind me is blocked off, and the same thing with the rows over here. But take a look at this. Like I said, I've never had Mongolian beef before. Anytime I've ever ordered Chinese food, I always stick with like chicken, General Saul's and teriyaki. So I've never really gotten out of my comfort zone. And I also want to try the pot sticker instead of getting the egg roll. And then we've got the ginger caramel ice cream. I don't know how I'm gonna actually eat that with the chopsticks. I'm gonna have to find a spoon. A long time ago, a friend told me the best way to actually learn to use chopsticks is to not break them and just use it like kind of like tweezers. So I'm going to use that method, even though I do know how to use chopsticks. So like I'll grab a piece of broccoli, but then like I'm not using anything. I'm just holding it like that. Very fancy. I'm excited to try this for the first time. It looks good, doesn't it? I'm going to grab a little onion and then make sure I grab a little bit of the beef itself. There we go. That's the way. This is gonna be good. I already know I'm gonna like it. This is so good. I love it. And then, okay, I'm gonna break my chopsticks now. <laughs> this is so good, and I love it with the broccoli and everything together. I also got myself the Sing Sao beer, which is one of my favorite beers. I get this at the supermarket all the time. It's very delicious, very light and refreshing. Now I want to try the pot sticker. So they have pot stickers that you can order as like an appetizer, but since this meal came with an egg roll, I asked if I can have a pot sticker instead, and they just give you one pot sticker to try. I already know I'm going to love the pot sticker because it's pan fried, and it's actually pan fried on both sides. Whenever I get pot stickers and they ask if you want it steamed or pan fried, I usually ask pan fried, and it's only done on one side, so this is already just how I like it. That is perfect. Literally perfect. I love this pot sticker and I can't wait to come back and get more of these. And I, it was a pork one too. So delicious. The beef is also very, very good. And now I wouldn't mind actually ordering it. So I wouldn't mind trying it from my local Chinese spot instead of just sticking to my usual chicken. And I would have never gotten out of my comfort zone unless I did this video here today. I don't think I've ever like sat at home and was just like, I'll try the beef this time. Do you know what I mean? So now I actually tried it, I like it, and I am gonna try it at my local spot. Now let's get to dessert, and we're gonna try this caramel ginger ice cream, and look how it says Lotus Blossom Cafe, and it's like a printed label. I wonder if they make this in-house and then package it up. It kind of looks like a generic cup, so I'm starting to think maybe they do. Oh, regardless, I'm excited to try it. Here is a little tip though. If you plan on ordering ice cream, do it after you eat your dinner because now mine's a little melted. I don't mind though, but I probably should have went back up and got it afterwards. It's unique. It's very unique. I don't know what to say about it actually. It tastes like a gingerbread ice cream. Like if you could like make gingerbread cookies into ice cream, kind of what it tastes like. <laughs> Have you ever ate something where you were like, this texture doesn't belong with the, like the taste? Like, you know what I mean? The texture doesn't belong with the taste and that's kind of how it is. Like when you eat it, you don't expect like cold ice creamy like feelings. So I don't know, I'm a little, I don't know how I feel about this yet. I'm gonna eat it though. Like I said, it's not bad. It's still a very delicious little dessert. It's just something doesn't something doesn't match up right with this. I still like it though. That was absolutely delicious. I'm so excited that I've gotten a new thing to actually try whenever I order Chinese food. And now we can explore around. Like I said, I want to go into the House of Good Fortune. This has an amazing merchandise location. It starts here and actually goes all the way around. It's very massive and big. And it looks like nobody is actually back here. If you want to get away from the crowds, this is a perfect spot back here. I mean, 
this is probably the most unoccupied space I've seen in Epcot in a while. Like there is nobody back here. And it's just really cool. I mean, the music is nice all of the pretty artwork and just the rich history of China itself. You can really spend hours here. They even have pay phones. Would you look at that? Pay phones in the China Pavilion at Epcot. Who would have known? I'm gonna keep in tradition and show you guys a hidden Mickey in each of the pavilions. If you notice in the France Pavilion, I didn't show you a hidden Mickey, it's because I showed you a hidden Remy in the bench. But I like actually just finding the little details and just sharing more with you. If you find any of these like lanterns or lights, all of the pillars have a hidden Mickey and I will just show you and let me know in the comments if you see it. Oh, it's pretty it's a it's a pretty good giveaway right here. <laughs> So now we'll go walk around the House of Good Fortune and then maybe catch Reflections of China. Just a little bit. I love actually going in there. It's a very great story and it's a great cinematography. I love all of the 360 films. The AC back here is so on point. You can actually buy Sing Sao's and then the Lucky Buddha beers right here. So I think I might get a Lucky Buddha beer. I really like them. Look at that. Right here. Lucky Buddhas. Look at that bottle. That is amazing. It's only $8.25 and also the Sing Sao's are only $7.75 back here. They also have a great collection of other Chinese beverages. Look at these big cans of juice down here. This is a kiwi fruit drink with pulp and then this one is a great drink with pulp. And these are like Arizona tea cans. Very big. And then they got green tea, oolong tea, bubble milk tea. Very fancy. And these things aren't really expensive. They're three bucks, just like a normal uh, drink would be here at Disney World. They have so many amazing gifts over here. I love everything in this store. I want to buy it all. Even little gifts for your pets. Look at this. I should get Gracie a little pumpkin. <laughs> this is adorable. What? They have so many nice things here. How much is this? Oh, it doesn't say. But this looks so fun. They have so many different colors and different outfits. You get the pumpkins, just regular hoodies. These are very fancy. They also have Lay's, like Chinese chips. So this is grilled squid flavor, $5.25 per bag. They also have a grilled pork flavor. Which one would you get? Would you get the squid or would you get the pork? Another thing you can buy is a bunch of different swords and these actually get shipped back to your room or they get shipped home, I believe. I don't think you can carry these around the park. I don't think that would be ethical. They have knives and they're all very fancy and they're kept locked in key. So you can't just go taking those. But I think I need to go drink my Lucky Buddha drink and then catch the Reflections of China show because I think that might close down before the park does. You know, sometimes they shut down attractions earlier than when the park closes just so they can get everyone out and get things wrapped up. And I think that's one of them. So we're going to drink our drink and then go watch the Reflections of China show. They also sell Bai Zhou, a modern twist to traditional Chinese spirit. Look at that. They have them all back there. That's all Bai Zhou? Yeah, that's it, Bai Zhou. Ooh, that looks really strong. What's the proof on it? 70 proof. Oh, it's all right there. Yeah, red version's 80 proof. Oh, I want to try it maybe. Yeah, that's the shot. Oh, all right, I'll do it. Which one's better? Um, so far we just do the... The red? No more dragon fire. Oh, no more dragon fire? Well, I'll take a red one. So you want the one shot and one beer? Yep, a shot of beer. <laughs> oh, look at the fanciness here. I'm only getting this because I've never had it before. Ooh, do I get to keep the fancy plate? Uh, no. no. <laughs> we just give you our. And then there is the Lucky Buddha. This is so fancy. Thank you. <laughs> I normally don't just drink shots like this, but this is by Joe and I've never had it before so it kind of piqued my interest and I decided to just go for it. When you're in China, try the Chinese liquor or the Chinese spirits. Oh, oh. 
Ooh. <laughs> uh, wow. It has like a 45 ABV. Whew. I like how the music kind of just like matched my mood there. <laughs> that was perfectly timed. I hope. I can't wait to see if that lined up perfectly. That literally has my throat on fire. I need to like wash this down. Wow. That was definitely worth the experience. So now if I ever get confronted with the question in life, have I ever tried it? I can say, yes, I have. And it was uh, a little rough on the throat and the esophagus. <laughs> but can we just mention how amazing it looks back here? This is a merchandise location. Like, I don't think you can get the theming better in a merchandise location. There are so many amazing artwork and Chinese heritage on these walls. I love it. And here we are. Look at this place in here. Wow. This feels great to be in here, doesn't it? The show is 12 minutes long and they just let in a whole new uh, group. So we have to wait 12 minutes until the next showing. I don't mind just sitting here though, because this is beautiful. Oh, someone else is waiting too. And then we got these statues here. These statues are out front and this is where you would walk in to see the inside of Shanghai Disney Resort. This is the exhibit that we walked and explored earlier. I think this is so cool in here. Look at all of this space and not too many people are coming for the show. They've actually socially distanced all of these little like boots or seats so that they're six feet apart. This is really nice. I love the carpet in here. Can't wait to watch the show. It even tells you, please don't move the benches. They have been positioned to keep a minimum of six feet between you and other parties. I wonder if these slide like very easily. Oh, they do. Like they like slide like almost like they have wheels on it, probably because of the carpet. So yeah, don't move these. Oh, now we're heading in. And like I said, this is a 360 film, so it's going to be all around us. Ah, China. When one thinks of this magnificent country, one cannot help but envision the one Li Chang Chang. The Great Wall. I'm changing. Shanghai, a city sophisticated, romantic. European influence. Even in the hectic pace of modern China, there is always time for Tai Chi, a tradition that has endured for centuries. We have had a long history. Much of it has been recorded in this fashion. However, it may be said that the history of the Chinese people is not written in ink, but with water. That was such a great show. I really love watching all of the different landscapes of China and Shanghai. And it was really cool. I couldn't film a lot of it though because you can never film the screens. It kind of, I don't know if you guys see it in the picture, but it makes like these lines. I tried setting my exposure all the way down, but you really can't do much about it, but it's really awesome. And I highly suggest if you have a free day to just check out all the 360 films, go to the different countries and enjoy them. I've been loving doing this World Showcase series. I hope you guys have been loving it too. And I'm gonna continue. We still have Morocco and Norway and uh, also the UK. Once uh, the, uh, what's it called? Once the pub actually opens up, Oh man, I can't think of the name of the, the uh, restaurant there. Once that opens up, which is closed for refurbishment, Rosen Crown, the Rosen Crown. Once the Rosen Crown opens up, we are gonna dine there. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.